Bears are amongst the largest land carnivores alive today. In fact, the largest land carnivores of the modern day are polar bears, with individuals tipping the scales at half a ton. However, even the largest modern bears pale in comparison to the ancient giants of the Ice Age, including a truly titanic bear that dwarfed modern polar bears. A gigantic bear from South America called Arctotherium. Arctotherium is an extinct genus of bear that lived during the late Pleistocene epoch, specifically a giant short-faced bear. Short-faced bears, or Tremarctines, are a subfamily of bears with characteristically short, boxy muzzles, and were incredibly widespread during the Pleistocene thousands of years ago, many reaching gigantic proportions like the North American Arctotus with some species having stood 10 feet tall and weighing over a thousand pounds, or over 500 kilograms. If that wasn't big enough, Arctotherium could reach even double the size of Arctotus, with some species like Arctotherium angustidens reaching an astounding 2,000 to 3,000 pounds, or nearly 2,000 kilograms. That's just over a ton. Such immense size would not only place Arctotherium as the largest bear ever known, but amongst the largest mammalian land carnivores to ever walk the earth. Stacking up against creatures like Deodon, Megistotherium, and Androsarchus. And the same could be said for Arctotherium's cousin, Arctotus. While the two are often confused for one another, Arctotherium and Arctotus are actually quite different animals despite the relation. Aside from their differences in size, Arctotus and Arctotherium varied in build and bulk. While both were massive bears, Arctotus is often characterized with a more gracile, streamlined build, while Arctotherium was on the opposite end of that spectrum, being much stockier and more robust. It's a distinct difference in anatomy that may determine the differing adaptations both bear had in their differing environments. This is especially evident when looking at their genetics. While Arctotus and Arctotherium are both giant short-faced bears, Arctotherium bears a much closer relation to another, smaller, short-faced bear. One that's still around in the modern day. The Spectacled Bear. Spectacled bears are the last short-faced bears around today. Named for the peculiar markings on their faces, they are the only bears around today that are native to South America, making their home in the Andes Mountains, hence their nickname as the Andean Bears. Living on a diet of omnivory, so plants, animals, and anything they could find lying around. Although it's important to note that only 5% of their diets are composed of meat. And with this relation to the prehistoric short-faced bears, the similarities between Arctotherium and the modern spectacled bears become all the more clear. Like spectacled bears, Arctotherium was thought to have been omnivorous, using a combination of massive arms and powerful jaws to forage for food, and thanks to the variation in size amongst Arctotherium, it allowed different individuals in different species to access a wider range of resources. At the same time, this variation in size and build allowed Arctotherium to fill in much wider ranges of niches and roles in their environments, with those sharing sizes and adaptations much closer to spectacled bears, likely utilizing the same environmental resources. However, Despite the comparative similarities, they also come with the distinct differences between Arctotherium and their modern cousins. The larger sizes of Arctotherium were also indicative of differing diets from their relatives. While Arctotherium seems to have been omnivorous like spectacled bears, the diets of these bears varied between different species in their respective environments. Some, like Arctotherium wengi, preferred a diet high in vegetation while the largest species, Arctotherium angustidens, refer to diet high in meat, based on various isotope samples, along with various bones of animals showing signs of feeding from Arctotherium. 
Ground sloths in particular seem to have been a favored food amongst these bears, with isotope analyses in several species of Arctotherium spiking in correlation with native sloths such as Glossotherium and Nothotherium, alongside several instances of ground sloth bones showing signs of having been fed on by Arctotherium. It's likely that this variation in diet is what allowed Arctotherium to be so widespread throughout South America, with four different species of this bear ranging in different parts of the continent, from El Salvador to Brazil to the very tip of Argentina. However, it's this success that often put Arctotherium in direct competition with South America's other giant carnivores, from jaguars to wolves to the largest obligate land carnivore on the continent, Smilodon populetar. However, this above all else put them in direct competition with another group of hunters that migrated into South America, humans. While human and Arctotherium interactions are rare in the fossil record, there are a select few examples in different regions that indicate they did happen, and facing a giant short-faced bear would have certainly been a daunting sight one way or another. To make matters even more frightening on the human side of things, as omnivores, Arctotherium weren't very picky, and could have eaten a number of native plants, including native coca plants. Long story short, ancient South Americans definitely were not worshipping aliens, but instead, fighting giant cocaine-fueled bears. Isn't prehistory fun? Despite their role as large carnivores, like all bears, there was a softer side to Arctotherium. After all, even bears desire the comforts of home, and for the giant Arctotherium, home seems to have been a burrow. There have been several pieces of evidence of Arctotherium living in what were once burrows, the evidence in particular being paleo burrows, or burrows constructed thousands or millions of years ago that still remain intact, often showing signs of what animals made them, sometimes even with their former prehistoric occupants still inside, albeit not alive. It's thought that based on the usage of these burrows, alongside the seasonal shifts in climates in different parts of South America, that Arctotherium may have utilized a behavior characteristic to bears, quasi-hibernation. Like other forms of hibernation, an animal's metabolism will slow down according to the seasonal change, and eventually, this animal will rest for extended periods of time during said seasonal changes. The key difference in quasi-hibernation is that animals, like bears, don't remain totally inactive, and will often wake up to forage for food and stretch their limbs before returning to slumber after said brief period of activity and restoring their food reserves. It's proven to be an effective strategy among several species of modern bears, allowing them to survive extended periods of cold and seasonal change alongside the subsequent lack of resources that come with the winter months. And it's a strategy that various species of Arctotherium could have used during seasonal changes in their time. Incidentally, these paleo burrows have led into another insight into the behaviors of these bears, specifically parental care. In 2021, the discovery of a paleo burrow was published, containing the fossilized remains of three Arctotherium, which appeared to be a mother and her cubs, an indicator in itself that like all bears, Arctotherium practiced parental care for a number of years. However, the comforts of home didn't come easy for these bears, and it's hypothesized that larger species of Arctotherium competed for dens with native Xenothrins of South America, like giant sloths and giant armadillos like Glyptodonts. However, despite the many unique adaptations Arctotherium possessed, they couldn't survive the environmental changes that led to their extinction. The specific cause of Arctotherium's disappearance alongside many other megafauna at the end of the Pleistocene, remain a mystery, with the current consensus being climate change and competition with humans. However, the legacy of Arctotherium lives on in an unexpected way, the modern spectacled bear. 
Spectacle Bears and Arctotherium didn't have much overlap during the Pleistocene, however, following the extinction of Arctotherium, fossil evidence indicates that it acted as an opportunity for Spectacle Bears to fill the roles left behind by their giant cousins as they began to migrate into South America. This goes even deeper with a crucial discovery in 2021 that suggests that Arctotherium and the ancestors of modern spectacled bears may have hybridized, producing offspring that one way or another carry the genes of both Arctotherium and the bears that would lead towards the modern spectacled bears of today, and likely occurred towards the end of the Pleistocene Epoch when the home ranges of the two bears began to overlap in the Yucatan resulting in spectacled bears ultimately carrying the genes of these Ice Age bears well after they went extinct. In a way, the ancient Arctotherium paved the way for the special spectacled bears still around today.